Alright guys, today I got something new for my boat that has been overdue already is the anchor. If you look at the anchor, um, it's not that appealing and also the chain. It doesn't look like it even belongs in this boat. Uh, it's been a great anchor, but now I got something even better than this one. I got some stainless steel chain, about 15 feet of it. And I got the tools to splice the rope. How nice this one looks. Beautiful. And now we're going to compare them side by side because this anchor only cost me about $180 and that Delta anchor there is about $160 to $170. But if I wanted to get an anchor like that one, it would have been over $300 on stainless steel. But I was able to find this one for $180. Let's see how this compares to the Delta. Right, they look exactly the same looks like this one's just a little bit tiny bigger uh, we're gonna measure them I got about 20 inches from here to here and this one I got about 20 and a half on the width here 10 and a half and this other one I got about 10 and a half on the width they both look very identical. If you look at the height, it's about the same height when they're sitting. This one is nine and a half. This is a nine and three quarters. And the bottom, and they both have the support in the back. This one has a bigger tongue. This one is seven and a half, and this one's about seven. Seven, this one's seven and a half, and this scope, it goes more towards the back. This one goes more towards the hole here. All right, now we're gonna test the weight. My refrigeration scale is very accurate. That's why I wanna use this one. All right, we're gonna try the carbonized one. Okay, it's 14 and four ounces and we'll try the stainless steel one okay the stainless steel is 13.3 ounces so this one here is missing about one pound the carbonized one is about a pound heavier than the stainless steel the stainless steel is always going to weigh a little bit less but if you look here it is advertised as 14 pounds uh, it's going to be okay one pound is not going to be a huge difference on the anchor and the reason that is is because metal weighs more than uh, stainless steel one thing i like about the stainless steel that this one doesn't have it is that this one is very sharp look how sharp it is and the galvanize is not as sharp to dig into the sand the corners are more rounded rounded corners and this one has more like a sharp uh, way to enter into the sand Now we're going to test how they tilt, which is very important. If they land this way, they both will land like that. So they both react the same. Okay, now one thing is I want to do, I want to put it upside down and see how they both perform. All right, so let's see if they a little movement. Okay, that one fell. All right, perfect. And this one has a bigger leaf in the back here. We got four inches, and this one has a four and a quarter. So these leaves in the back are a little bit bigger on this one, and so a little bit shorter. The opening here is the same. 15 feet of this thing. Way nicer shame than the uh, galvanized one. All right, in the past I had this swivel placed like this in the anchor, which is not 100% uh, the best way to do it. 
the best way to connect this is see if you connect this right here like this and you have to take out the anchor if you go sideways you could break the swivel if you go sideways if the anchor gets stuck this could break off because you're going sideways it's not designed to go sideways it's designed to go up and down not sideways so in order to prevent that the best thing to do is add this stainless steel add a little bit of loctite Now I can place a swivel here. Also place a little bit of black tight in there, the bolt. Perfect. Now if you look at it before, the anchor could not move freely side to side, but now it can. So by putting this swivel just straight, you can only go up and down, but not sideways, because it'll break the swivel here. But now it can go any way it wants. So this is the best way to connect your swivel to an anchor. Now I can connect the chain here. All right, so it's all set. And also this is gonna add more weight to the chain. Now I discarded a lot of the rope that has been worn out a lot. And from here on, the rope looks pretty good because the windlass does do some damage to the rope sometimes. Uh, this part right here is fine. It's newer, but this one gets used a lot. So I'm gonna cut it right here. Before I cut it, I'm gonna place some tape up here. So that way the rope doesn't unwind all the way up to here. Okay, now that I cut the rope, I need to untwine all this rope. All this has to go through the windlass with a chain with a chain and it cannot have any shockles because then it's going to damage the windlass it's not going to go through the windlass so it's not going to work right about perfect now to start with we're going to start with one of these threads I'm gonna come down on this one. And now I'm gonna go up through here. There we go. Okay, this one is done. And now I'll pick another one. And what you wanna do is pick them randomly. This time I'm gonna get four threads through the needle. Because the thing is that you don't want this to be too smooth because if it's too smooth, the uh, windlass is not going to grip into the rope. I got four right through the needle. And now we're going to start threading. All right. Put it through there. Hold it a little bit. Open it up with the needle a little bit. That way the thread goes in a lot easier. I already went four times through the threading so that is perfect so now this one I'm gonna cut it right here this one a little bit higher a little bit longer so that way they're not all uh, the same they're staggered all right, that's it. Now what I want to do is get the torch. A little bit, not too much heat. All right, perfect, look at that. Perfect splice. And you do want these imperfections of little lumps around here, these little lumps, because if you don't have these little lumps, what's gonna happen is the windlass, the teeth, is gonna spin. It has happened to me in the past. 
So you do have to have these little lumps so that way when the windlass is chewing on the rope, it's like it's a chain, it'll be able to chew it. Like here, if you look up here in the texture of the rope, uh, the windlass will pull this. But if you make this real perfect, this will get stuck in the windlass like it has happened to me in the past. So by having it like this, kind of imperfected, it's perfect, works out great. This is not gonna go anywhere, all right? This is all done. And that's how you splice the rope. Perfect. And always it's very important to place the clip because that clip is going to save your life if this anchor deploys out of here while you're navigating or when you're on the highway. It's going to create a terrible accident and destruction to your vehicle, trailer, or uh, to your boat out drive. So this little clip here is aluminum. It doesn't make noise. It's very light and it's very strong. So, so if this anchor deploys by itself, this is going to hold the anchor in place until you notice. So this clip here is a great piece of safety and it's very inexpensive. I will place a link in the description below so you can see where can you get it in Amazon. All right guys, I hope you guys found this video helpful, how to splice the chain to the rope and also about this new improvement on my boat. If you want to find more information about the anchor that I just purchased to replace my Delta anchor, which is very similar and a stainless steel and you can save some money and it makes it look awesome. Look at that. Looks great. And I'll place a link in the description below of all the items that I use to install the anchor to the rope. Uh, the needle that I use to splice the rope, the swivel, everything that I have used, I'll place it in the description below. Alright guys, I hope you guys found this video helpful. Thank you for watching and always navigate safe.